The aim of this 360 video app is to give non-critical care staff immersive insight into the environment, equipment and procedures used in the care of a patient recovering from COVID-19 who is on invasive ventilation. The intensive care unit, ICU, room is a highly specialised environment, differing in many ways from a standard hospital room. ICU rooms have a higher staffing ratio and a premium is placed on patient visibility. Units are often set up so that all patients can be under continuous observation from a central nursing station, either directly via a glass wall or using cameras. ICU is normally staffed so that a trained nurse is available on a one-to-one -one basis for each critically ill patient. The ongoing assessment of patients by the ICU team is essential in detecting signs of poor delivery of blood and fluids to organs and other areas of a patient's body. Infection control is very important, particularly with an infectious condition like COVID-19. So at the entrance there is a sign on the floor marking out the clean zone from the infected zone and anyone crossing over this threshold must be in full protective equipment. The transmission of COVID-19 mainly occurs through respiratory droplets generated by coughing and sneezing and through contact with contaminated surfaces. Personal protective equipment, or PPE, protects staff from being exposed to the infection. Disposable fluid repellent coveralls or long sleeve gowns must be worn when there is a risk of splashing of body fluids and a disposable apron provides inadequate protection. Full face visors and safety spectacles protect the face and eyes from contamination by respiratory droplets in the air and splashes from respiratory secretions, blood and other body fluid. Respiratory protection worn over the nose and mouth protects staff from inhaling airborne particles, aerosols. There are three categories of the tight-fitting disposable filtering face piece respirators, FFPs. FFP1, FFP2 and FFP3. FFP3 and loose-fitting powered hoods provide the highest level of protection and are recommended when caring for patients where high-risk aerosol-generating procedures, AGPs, are being performed. Where a risk assessment shows that an FFP2 respirator is suitable, they are recommended as a safe alternative. N95 respirators are broadly equivalent to an FFP2. Disposable gloves must be worn when exposure to blood and or other body fluids is likely, including equipment and room decontamination. Gloves must be disposed of immediately after finishing a procedure and each patient contact, followed by hand hygiene. A critical care bed is like a standard hospital bed with a few key differences. At the foot of the bed there is an intermittent pneumatic compression device which inflates and deflates a pressure mattress in different areas at different times in a wave-like effect. This is important in preventing pressure sores, especially for patients who may be anaesthetised for several weeks. Special support stockings using massage-like pressure also prevent blood from pooling in the veins of the legs. Patients in critical care need constant close monitoring of their vital signs. The bedside monitor displays information on the vital signs of a patient, including heart rate, blood pressure and oxygen saturation. This gives continuous insight into a patient's physiology. Each measurement will have alarm levels set up to help identify any sudden deterioration which needs to be dealt with. A ventilator is used when a patient is unable to breathe for themselves effectively. They can also be used to deliver high concentrations of oxygen and medications directly into the lungs via the endotracheal tube. 
The main purpose of ventilation is to provide life support without causing harm to the lungs and the patient. Information on the ventilator screen gives more detail on the ventilatory measurements. Respiratory rate is a key vital sign, the single most sensitive indicator of critical illness. All ICU patients should have this monitored continuously and recorded hourly. Who should set up or make changes to ventilators? Only specialist staff with many years of training should set up or make changes to ventilators. An endotracheal or ET tube is a flexible tube inserted through the mouth or nose into the windpipe. This tube, connected to the ventilator, aids in breathing and delivers oxygen. A nasogastric tube dribbles food or medication via the nose into the stomach. About one in five people admitted to intensive care with COVID needs the help of an artificial kidney machine. A dialysis machine or haemofilter removes blood from a patient, purifies it by dialysis and adds vital substances before returning it to a vein. Central venous access, or the central line, is inserted into a large vein. Its purpose is to administer drugs and fluids, measure central venous pressure, CVP, and provide access for hemofiltration and dialysis. CVP is monitored using a fluid-filled pressure transducer. All ICU patients will have continuous cardiac monitoring to assess heart rate and rhythm. ECG is recorded using a three-lead system instead of the usual 12-lead ECG to make it more comfortable and easier to carry out the basic care of the patient, such as cleaning and moving. A patient's ECG rhythm suddenly changes. What action do you think should be taken? Any changes in rhythm would need an immediate review, with the possibility of changing to a full, more sensitive 12-lead ECG. An arterial line allows beat-to-beat -beat monitoring of the arterial blood pressure and sampling of arterial blood. They are usually inserted into the radial artery due to lower complication rates and ease of access. The line is connected to a transducer via a column of fluid in the tubing, which converts the pressure to an electrical signal passed to a monitor, giving a beat-by-beat -beat reading of blood pressure. Arterial waveform analysis also provides a way of measuring cardiac output, a key determinant of oxygen delivery. Arterial lines may also be set up for temperature measurement. Should an arterial line be used to inject drugs? Drugs should never be injected into arterial lines. Arterial lines should always be clearly labelled to make sure this doesn't happen. A transducer converts one form of energy to another. For most ICU monitors, this involves converting the pressure in a vessel into an electrical signal which is displayed on a monitor. The electrical signal is displayed in a waveform that instantly reflects the changes in pressure in the vessel. Poor calibration or zeroing of a transducer signal can lead to inaccuracies. At what level do you think a transducer should be zeroed at? A transducer is zeroed at the level of the heart. Syringe pumps are used to deliver powerful medications in very small amounts to keep patients in an artificially induced coma. Patients are put under sedation so that they can be ventilated properly 
and are able to tolerate the endotracheal tube. It's important that they are sufficiently sedated to keep them safe and reduce the risk of the tubes and wires being pulled off. Volumetric pumps are used to deliver large infusions such as fluids or medications. A computer terminal is used for inputting data for observations such as oxygen saturation levels, heart rate and blood pressure. This will feed into the bedside monitor and distant terminals where all the patient's observations can be seen at once by a doctor or nurse sitting at a desk. Chest radiography is an important way of identifying COVID-19 and detecting changes caused by the infection in the lungs. Mobile X-ray units are used for patients who can't be transported to the imaging department because they are too ill or as an infection control measure. The sharp spin is important for the safe disposal of needles and syringes. Bedside lung ultrasound is a valuable alternative to CT scanning for monitoring the progression of COVID-19 in patients and has a high sensitivity for picking up the disease at the surface of the lung. Although CT scanning is the gold standard method for chest imaging, transporting a patient for a scan risks spreading infection and requires additional personal protective equipment. That is the end of this overview.